Okay, today's daf we're going to be learning is Rosh Hashanah Daf Yud. Today's daf is sponsored by Heather Hadar Stone in honor of her daughter Hila Bat Hadar Cheskel on her commission as a second lieutenant in the IDF Education Command. So proud of you and your accomplishments. Can't wait to see where you lead next. And by Jordana Hyman to our amazing daughter Priel Hyman Borowski on her gius today. We are bursting with pride and excitement as you begin your service. May Hashem protect you and bless you always with your fellow soldiers. With love, mom and dad. Big Army Day, Batzlacha to everybody. Okay, we are going to start our daf from the bright that we ended with yesterday. Okay, we've been talking about Orla and and Shmita and Tosefet Shvid. If you remember, we have to add on extra days before the beginning of the Shmita year. We're gonna have a daf. I'm already gonna tell you. It, you can see the Amud Aleph is very short, but that's often an indication that there's many different commentaries and a lot of different interpretations, and it's quite a, a daf that has caused a lot of different commentaries about what exactly is going on. So as usual, it's one of these dapim where I'll raise a few different opinions and there are some issues with each one, as I always like to say, right? If things were simple, then there wouldn't be many different opinions. So just keep that in mind as we learn. So we had this bright yesterday. Tanu Rabbanan. Echad anotea, echad amavrich, echad amarkiv. Right? Someone who plants a tree or someone who takes... Okay, the, the idea of the markiv, uh, I'm sorry, the, mav, the mavrich is to take a shoot from a vine and plant it in the ground next to the tree. The echad markiv, which is grafting a tree. Erev shvi'it, shloshim yom lefnei rosh hashanah. Okay, the bright is going to set up two tracks. One is you planted it 30 days before rosh hashanah, in which case, for the laws of orla, al talo shana, this already is considered the first year. Okay, so let's just take the Hebrew years. Let's assume you're, you plant it in Tavshin Pei. You count, right, in 30 days before Rosh Hashanah on Aleph Elul. You already count Tavshin Pei as your first year. Tavshin Aleph Pei Aleph is your second year. Tavshin Pei Bet is your third year. Okay, so when are you allowed to eat it? You would assume, okay, now this gets tricky, but you would assume you can eat it on Rosh Hashanah already. The fruits that grow in the year of Tavshin Pei Dalet, you're allowed to eat. In a minute, we're going to see that's not exactly the case. But that's what it sounds like from here. And if you were to plant them 30 days before Shemitah year, you can leave them for the next for the Shemitah year as well. You don't need to uproot them. But but if it's within 30 days before Rosh Hashanah, doesn't count as a year of Orla, and you can't keep them in the Shemitah year, meaning you basically overrode the laws of Shemitah because you didn't do, again, there's a bit of a different interpretation as to why. Is this a law of Tosefet? Right now it sounds like it's a law of Tosefet Shvi'it. That's what Rashi says. Mishum Tosefet Kodesh. And you didn't do that added, right? You you transgressed. So we're going to make you uproot it. You can't keep that tree from going. It's very confusing because later in the daf we're going to understand this 30 days very differently, okay? So hold on, not very, but differently. So that's why it's going to be a little tricky because you're going to kind of understand things one way and then you're going to start thinking, wait, what's that 30 days for? Maybe it's for something else. So right now we assume it's because it's for Orla, it's not even considered a full year before. Likewise for Shvi'id, it's it's basically connected to that year, probably Medin Tosefet right now. That's what we're assuming. Now comes the tricky line. Uperot nitiazo. And these fruits, okay, now which fruits we don't really know. It wasn't so clear. But Rashi and others are going to say what we're talking about is go back to the beginning of the bride, to the first case, the 30 days. If you planted it 30 days before, then asurim ad tu bishvat im le orla orla ve'im le revai revai. As I said a minute ago that I was going to change this, but we said, till now you would think, I planted them on Aleph Elu. That gives me a month before Rosh Hashanah. That counts as a year. That's Tavshin Pei. Tavshin Pei Aleph is year number two. Tavshin Pei Bed is year number three. Tavshin Pei Dali comes in, I think I can eat the fruits, comes the bright and says, no, since, and this is Rosh's interpretation, since you planted it only 30 days before, okay, there's a huge debate between Rashi and a bunch of commentaries and a bunch of commentaries on the other side, the Rambam, the Ravid, they're all with Rashi, and then the Ran and others are on the other side. Since you planted it only 30 days before, and that year, really, you're not supposed to eat fruits for three years. So that means that we need to extend that f- third year, okay? You, that's, which is really year number four already. Year number four comes in, comes the bright and says, well, guess what? You can't eat fruits that didn't, now actually it's even trickier, that didn't bud until after Tu B'Shvat. 
You can only eat fruits that budded, that the tree budded, after Tu Okay? So even though you planted it on Aleph Elul, and you had a whole month, which we say counts as a year, doesn't matter. You have to, no, not that it doesn't matter, it matters. So what does it mean, though? That if you planted it those 30 days, even though you count it as a year, you don't have to wait till the next Rosh Hashanah, okay? But you do have to wait till the fruits bud on Tu And only fruits that budded after Tu and you know, the tree that budded and fruits grew from there, only those are allowed to be eaten in the fourth year. Okay, so even though it's very, right, it's a very interesting halacha because it seemed very simple that we're going to go by Aleph Petitre. Sounds like Aleph Petitre comes in Tefshin Pedalad, you should be allowed to eat it. But they say, no, that's not the case. Okay, you have Tol Tishba. So according to Rashi, this is only in a case, and then the question is, right, is it exactly on the dot 30 days, right? How far do we extend the 30 days? I mean, 30, 35, 40, 45, right? How far does it go? But it's basically only really instituted if you have very, very short year. Now, some say, well, maybe it should be all the way from Tu Bishvat until there because you need three full years, right? So there's a debate about that. Other, the other side of commentary say, oh no, really what we're talking about here is anything that was planted before Rosh Hashanah, like around from Tu Bishvat until Rosh Hashanah. And it's really including anything, right? We're going to push it off till Tu Bishvat of the upcoming year. In which case, the biggest question on that commentary is, well then, and, and then the reason is actually, according to them, it's a different reason. It's because they believe that the, it's not because, okay, you didn't have enough of a year, so we're going to push off. It's that the, the, they believe that the, at least the way some people explain, the anything that buds before Tu Bishvat is really budding from the sap from last year's tree. In other words, it's the sap from last year that's giving it its energy to be able to bud. And therefore, it's all considered, right, until it's true that really this year it's permitted. However, anything that doesn't bud, that anything, let's say, that buds until Tu Bishvat is really from last year's tree. So because of that, it takes its energy from last year's tree, that's considered or the fruit. Okay, so then it's a, it's a different explanation and it has to do more with the agriculture and how it works and how the tree grows. And therefore, if it was planted and it wasn't a full three years, so then it's going to be basically growing from last, you know, any, anything. It's really actually, it's not so much a matter of when you plant it because it really has to do with when this, uh, when it's budding from. It's a combination. And then the question is, according to that, what's the significance of Aleph Petishre then? The whole thing goes by Tubishvat, then how does Aleph Petishre make sense? And that's a big weakness with their approach. Some answers are given, but we'll leave it with that. So basically, it's not clear whether we mean payroll. You know, we have some case, whether it's a very broad case or whether it's a very narrow case, where sometimes we're going to say you actually can't eat the fruit starting from Rosh Chodesh, for, uh, from Rosh Hashanah, first of Tishrei, but you actually have to wait till Tu Bishvat. Now they say, and not only for Orla, but also the fourth year, which is Neta Ravai. In other words, if we're going to push off the three years of Orla, to middle of the fourth year, to Tu Bishvat. We're also going to push off Nete Revai, which is the fruits that grow in the fourth year, which now we're going to say, again, whatever case this is, in this kind of case, then we're going to push it off. It's going to go from Tu Bishvat to next Tu Bishvat, and it's going to include any fruits, any fruits that grew from a tree that budded between Tu Bishvat and Tu Bishvat. It's going to be the fourth year. It's going to go into the fifth year also. Remember what happens in the fourth year? You have to bring the produce to, to Jerusalem and eat it in Jerusalem. It has sanctity. So now, Menahan Emile, where do we get this from? It's, it doesn't seem, right? It seems very clear in the Torah. There's three years, there's four years, there's five years. Why all of a sudden are we pushing this off? Especially if we say Rosh Hashanah is Aleph Betishrei. It should be Aleph Betishrei. It shouldn't be Tu B'Shvat. So, some people say, right, Rabbi Yechia brought it in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, others brought it in the name of Rabbi Yanai. Amal Ka, the Pasuk says, Uvashana Rabbiit, Uvashana Chamishit. Okay, I'll read you the verse so that you understand. First, it starts talking, when by Yikra Yutep, Sukim Kaf Gimel to Kaf Hey, it says, when you get to the land and you plant any fruit trees, you do Orla for three years. Okay, and Arelim Lo Yachel, you can't eat them. Now it should have said in the fourth year, but it says end on the fourth, in the fourth year. 
Hashem, all of its fruits will be sanctified to God. Again, it adds this and on the fifth year, rather than just saying on the fifth year. You should eat the, the fruits. Right? Okay, this is yours to eat. So comes the Trasha and says, why all the vavs? It's to tell you, it's connecting between the third year and the fourth year, and connected between the fourth year and the fifth year. To tell you, that sometimes the third and the fourth year overlap, that what's true for the third year is going to be true for the fourth year. And, right, that when we get into the fourth year, everything from the beginning of the year, in this kind of a case, again, whether it's exactly 30 days before that you planted it or maybe even more, but the point is that sometimes they overlap and the third year is the fourth year is actually going to be treated like the third year, that you can't eat the fruits, and the fifth year is going to be treated like the fourth year, that you have to bring your fruits to Jerusalem. Okay, that's a, it's at least alluded to in the Pasuk by that. Okay, next. Lema de Loki Rabbi Meir. Okay, our whole day today is really dealing with this bright tap, which is, now we want to suggest that this Mishnah, again, we're going back to the 30 days, and as I told you, eventually we're going to change a little bit what the need for this 30 days is. Right now, we assume the 30 days is, in order for something to be considered a year, you need minimum 30 days. This is what we've seen before. We saw it with renting a house, right, that you don't rent a house for less than 30 days, so therefore, 30 days is a year. We saw with the kings that one day was enough to be considered a year. So sometimes it's one day, sometimes it's 30. So now we're going to say the fact that our Mishnah says 30 days seems to indicate that they hold right. What I was kind of establishing is maybe it depends on the situation. But this is, the Gemara is going to assume, well, there must be a general rule. Okay, maybe there's an exception made for a rental of houses, as we said, because people don't rent houses for less than 30 days. But otherwise, we're going to go by a general rule. Either you consider one day or you consider 30. I'll give you an example. Waiting between milk and meat. Some people wait five hours because they say it's into the sixth hour. Some people wait five hours and 30 minutes because in order to be into the sixth hour, it has to be half an hour into it. So that's exactly the debate here. Is one day into the year or is 30 days? This is going to be our topic for the rest of today's stuff. So why don't we suggest that it's not like Rabbi Meir or Mishnah? Because, di'i Rabbi Meir, ha'amal, yom echa b'shana chashuv shana. Okay. Rabbi Meir says somewhere else, which we're going to see in a minute, that one day in a year is enough to be considered a year. In which case, that doesn't match our Mishnah, because our Mishnah clearly needed 30 days. They said if it's not within 30 days, it's not considered a year. That's assuming, again, that our Mishnah is referring to right, this idea that in order for it to count for a year, it needs a 30-day period. Okay? So that's the assumption right now. How do we know that Rabbi Meir holds this? We're going to go to a different topic. Did Tanya. Pal ha'amor b'torah stam. There's different animals mentioned in the Torah and the different names. And sometimes it's confusing what exact animal is this called. But we're going to learn that the names of the animals sometimes are, they can be talking about the same animal, but using a particular name connotes an age. Okay? So, when you see the word pal, it's talking about a bull, but it's a bull that's three years old. Okay? Now, what's three years old? According to Rabbi Meir, Ben so if you see parstam, like you need the par for Yom Kippurim, remember the Kohen brings the special Yom Kippur korban, or the par halim davar shotzibor, when the, the Beitin teaches the wrong halacha and the people all follow them, you bring a par. So what's this par? Ben esrim va'arba'ah chodesh ve'yom echad. It's 24 months and one day, right? In other words, saying into the third year, by one day only. Tivir Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Elazar Omer, ben esrim va'arba'a chodesh u'shloshim yom. Right? I would have said this differently. I would have said either two year, two months and a, uh, two years and a, and a month, or I would have said twenty five months. Right? They say it kind of funny, twenty four months and thirty days, which is really basically twenty five months. But anyway, right? It, it highlights what we're looking for, which is thirty days is a year. Only when it's into the year thirty days do we count it as three years old. It's not three years old otherwise. By the way, where's the most popular case where we do this? Bar and bat mitzvah. It's 12 in a day or 13 in a day, right? That's the, it's the, that one day. We hold like Rabbi Meir on this issue. So now they say, Shaya Rabbi Meir, Omer. now we need the background for this machloket, which is, I already gave you some of it, but here we're going to see different animals are called different names and how old are they. Okay, this comes from cattle. So young cattle is if it just says the word Egel, it means Ben Shana. It needs to be within its first year. Ben Bakar, if you says, if it says 
Egel ben Bakal, that means ben Stein, two years old. Pal ben Shalosh. Okay, so once you see a par, you know it's three years. Again, the relevance of this is for sacrifices. You have to know which animal you can bring. So now they say, so that's the end of our suggestion. The Gemara seemed to say, it looks like our Mishnah is not holding like Rabbi Meir, because Rabbi Meir would require only one day, and our Mishnah require. I'm sorry, not our Mishnah. My mistake, the Brayta. The Brayta that we started with today talks about how 30 days is the cutoff. So it must be 30 days and not uh, one day. So it must not match Rabbi Meir. Okay, I'll already tell you the structure. We're now going to try to reject this suggestion, but we're going to reject the rejection, and in the end, we're going to be left with it's not Rabbi Meir. If it's not Rabbi Meir, we're going to say it's Rabbi Elazar. The Gemara then is going to raise a problem with that, and we're going to go back eventually to saying it is Rabbi Meir and understanding this Brayta differently than we understood it in the beginning, which is what I kind of alluded to when we first started learning it. So now the Gemara is going to say, wait a minute. Maybe a filu tema Rabbi Meir. Maybe you can explain this bright according to Rabbi Meir. How so? Kika ama Rabbi Meir yom echad b'shana chashuv shana b'sof shana. These are two different kinds of countings. One is starting your first year. Can you count it as? Can you count thirty days as a year or one day as a year? And the animal is: Can you count the last year partially as a full year? because right, we're counting, you got 24 full months, year one, year two, and now year three, only a little bit, will count. So what they want to suggest is, maybe when Rabbi Meir said you need only a day, he's talking about the end of a count, because you've already had two full years, so one more day you can already say it's a year. But when it comes to beginning a count, maybe you need a unit that's significant in order to start counting. So that's what they're going to say, right? Maybe Rabbi Meir says, Ki kama Rabbi Meir, yom shana chashub shana, one day can be considered a full year, but sof shana, at the end of a counting. It's not really at the end of a year. It really means at the end of a count, when you try to get to the last year, the final year in a count. But you're not going to say that in the beginning of a count. That's not you. To start something off, you need something more significant. But the Ugar is going to totally reject this. Rav is going to reject it. And where is he going to? He says, it's a Kabachomer for Mida that it would be the reverse. How so? Anida, according to Torah law, this isn't what we do today, but according to Torah law, Anida a woman who has menstrual bleeding, is anida in a period of impurity for seven days, including, right, it starts from the first day she starts bleeding, and it goes seven days. At the end of that seventh day, it says in the Torah, to, um, shiva'at yamim tia benida ta, I brought the verse on the, on the sheet. Seven days she should be anida. That means she has to be seven complete days. She can't go to the mikvah until after the end of the seventh day, most people who go to the, and this is unique, because most people go to the mikvah go in the morning of their last day. She has to wait until the seventh day is entirely complete. This is where we're going with it, right? The end has to be entirely complete, even though the beginning does it. Why? Because whenever she starts bleeding, she counts that day as her first day. doesn't matter if it was in the morning, in the afternoon. Right? Obviously, at night, it will be the next day, halachically. But in a halachic day, right, as long as it was before sunset, that counts already as her first day. So what do you see? To start her count, I'm already going to explain this, and then we'll read it inside, to start her count, she just needs a little bit. To end her count, she needs a complete day. And that's the exact reverse. So we're going to say, you can make a kavachomer from here. So let's read it. Uma nida, if a nida, she ain't chilata yom olela besofa, just the beginning of the day doesn't help her at the end. She needs an entire complete day. Then, sof hayom olala betchilata, and yet, sof hayom olala betchilata. The end of the day, right, in the beginning does actually work. So therefore, if to get started, if to, if to finish, she needs a complete day, but to get started even a little bit. So um, Shana, uh, when you're talking about the, our years here, if you want to say that one day is enough when it comes to the par, right? Even one day is enough, according to Rabbi Meir, at the end, when it needed, at the end it didn't work, but at the beginning it did work. Wouldn't you then say, that in the beginning, one day should be enough. One, you know, one, uh, one day should count. So therefore, I see you're talking about shiva. Shiva works in both cases, right? Mikzare yom kekulo in the beginning and at the end. Okay, this is right. That's what it's called. Mikzare yom kekulo. We can treat part of a day as an entire day. So you see that it's different in different situations. So basically, they make a cup of homer from here and say it must be if Rabbi Meir holds at the end, it's enough. It actually should work also at the beginning to start the count. So what we suggest it doesn't really work. And then we're left with, it's not Rabbi Meir. Well, if it's not Rabbi Meir, by default, it has to be Rabbi Elazar. 
which makes sense because it's 30 days and Rabbi Elazar says 30 days, so perfect. But not so perfect because the Gemara raises a different issue, which is why I said this is a little confusing because we didn't raise this issue at all before. It was as if this issue didn't exist. All of a sudden they're going to say, but wait, this other issue you weren't, you didn't think about. Ve'elamai, Rabbi Elazar, but what? Then it's Rabbi Elazar. If that's the case, shloshim shloshim bai. Then you would need 30 and another 30. While you, know, you need 60 altogether. It's an easier way to just say it. Why? Did not. In other words, then you would need to start planting 60 days before Rosh Hashanah, according to Rabbi Lazal, because you would need 30 days for what he thinks for a year, and 30 days before, the, the 30 days that are just before the year really go with the next year. So if you're going to say that there's this, we want to count this as a year that's separate from that, you can't use the 30 days right before, because the 30 days right before are automatically considered part of the next year. Then we have Rabbi Elazar adding 30 days because and that's, if, let's say, Aleph Be'alul is considered like Aleph Petishrei, which we'll see in a minute why it is when it comes to planting trees, then basically if you want to say this is going to count as a year before, then you have to have another 30 days before, according to Rabbi Elazar. And that clearly doesn't appear in the Brighton. Now, why do you need this 30 days? And now we're going to see it's not necessarily 30. It could be 3 or it could be 14. But either which way, it's something additional to the 30. The same three verbs we had in our, in our Brita. You can't plant, you can't um, repl- you know, uh, replant a shoot next to a tree. And you can't graft. Okay, you can't do it 30 days before. This is kind of what the, what the Brita said. But it says here, in this Mishnah, it says, It says, and if you did it, you have to uproot it. Now, this is not Medin because of this Tosefet. This is a, is a halacha because of what we call hashrasha or haklata. Anything that didn't take root yet is considered, it goes by when it takes root. So the Tanakhama thinks it takes 30 days for it to take root. So anything you plant on Aleph Be'alul goes with Aleph Betishrei. Okay? It's as if it was planted in Aleph Betishrei. Okay, now... Some people think this is really goes by that. Some people say that, right? Some people understand this is in Tosefet. Okay, Rashi says this is Tosefet. Okay, this is part of, because it's part of Tosefet Shvi'i, right? Therefore, we, we can't do it, right? You have to uproot it. And then, again, according to Rabbi Elazar, if you want it to count for a year, though, it has to start from before. Because this is already, this, this would be if you hold Tosefet back to yesterday's Machloket is an extension of, right, rather than something new. If it's an extension of, then it's really considered the next year already. Some people say that it's actually a, a, like a, a concern, or some people say it's a penalty, that we institute a penalty because we're worried people aren't going to take Shemitah seriously. They're, don't, they're not so, it's, it's hard to keep Shemitah. So they weren't so careful about it, so they, institute, they made it even more strict to kind of ensure, like safeguard it. Some people say it's that if we, if it only took root in the upcoming year and you planted it earlier, well, when is it going to be noticeable that you planted this tree? Only when it took root, which is going to be in the Shemitah year. So if you start counting this tree, right, and then you eat in three more years your Orla fruit, people are going to think that you planted it in the Shemitah year because they'll see it took root there and they'll think that you planted it in the Shemitah year and they'll basically, you know, accuse you of planting in Shemitah year. So to avoid that concern, we basically say if it took root in the Shemitah year, we're not going to go by that because... But we don't, we're not going to consider there was the year before, okay? Because then people will think that you planted the Shemitah year. There's like issues of concern. Anyway, let's get back to our topic. So basically he says, you need this extra 30 days. Those 30 days are really considered like the next year. Rabbi Yehud Omer, He says, if your tree didn't take root within three days, it's never going to take root which is basically another way of saying it's not 30 days, it's three days for it to take root. It sounds like they're having an agricultural machloket here, like a reality. What happens? Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Shimon, and Rabbi Shte Shabbaton. They have the in-between approach, two weeks. Okay, so you basically have three days, 14 days, or 30 days, which basically means that the Amar Rav Nachum Baravua, uh, Amar Rabbi Baravua, now we don't get know exactly how this relates to our Brayta, but Rabbi Nachman said in the name of Rabbi Baravua, Le'divrei ha'omer shloshim, tzarich shloshim, shloshim v'shloshim. 
לדברי האומר שלושה, צריך שלושה או שלושים. לדברי האומר שש שבתות, צריך שתי שבתות או שלושים יום. Now he says, if you go back to our original Brita, the concept discussed in our Brita, not what it says in our Brita, our Brita says 30. But if you go back to that law, basically, if you hold, it takes 30 days to take root. In order for it to be considered the previous year, you'll need 30 plus 30, you'll need 60. And if you say it's 14 days for it to take root, then in order for it to be considered its own year, right, and permitted to plant before the Shemitah year, you'd need 44 days. And if you say it's three days, you'd need 33 days. Now, none of those appear in the Braita. So, if it's Rabbi Elazar, right, you would assume, let's assume, Rabbi Elazar says 30 for that, he'd probably say 30 for the other thing. So, basically, he needs 60. And our Braita says 30. So, it doesn't make sense. And now they say, Even if you say he holds by the most minimalist opinion in that Mishnah, then what would he hold? Three days, plus another 30, 33. Still, you can't explain it with the Braita. So therefore, assuming now, and as the assumption is our Mishnah clearly needs those 30 days before. And that's why we have 30 days before. Now it's a little tricky, though. It doesn't work like Rabbi Elazar, but it also doesn't work like Rabbi Meir. Because now we're learning our Mishnah is either going to, and it's um, our Braita. Our Braita that said, 30 days before Rosh Hashanah counts as a full year and you could do it before Shemitah. So now, if the 30 days before are considered, right, part of the, up, the, the next year, the Shemitah year or the early year, then you would need something, right? You need more than 30 days for it to be considered. So, let, so if it was Rabbi Lazar, we need 30 more, right? If you say the 30 days are made up of the three plus, right, or the or the... 14 plus, let's say only 14 days are considered part of the next year, or only three days. But still, if we're going to go with either Rabbi Meir or Rabbi Elazar, you need to add one day at least, or or 30 days. So then you would have, let's say, either four days or 15 days. That would be Rabbi Meir, or 31 days. And those are your three possibilities. According to Rabbi Elazar, you would need the three plus 30, so 33, or 14 plus 30, 44, or 30 plus 30, 60. So it's definitely not Rabbi Elazar, that's for sure. It's also not Rabbi Meir, though, because, right, if it's not going to be Rabbi Elazar, we'll assume it's Rabbi Meir, because what did we just say? Rabbi Meir would need either 3 plus 1, that would be 4 days. And here it says 30. 14 plus 1, that would be 15 days. That would be Rabbi Meir, uh, that would be, right, 15. Or 30 plus 1, that would be 31. Again, none of those appear in our Mishnah. So that's where the Gemara is going to be stuck right now. First, they're going to say it can't be Rabbi Elazar because you would have needed 60 or 44 or 33, and that's not what it says in the Brayta. So it must be Rabbi Meir. And then the 30 mentioned here is for Klita, is for, you know, having it take root. And then you'd have to say Rabbi Meir holds by the Tanakhama in the Mishnah that says 30 days for it to take root. But again, what are you missing? You're missing the... It's very nice. It takes root for 30 days. But what about the one day that you need for it to be counted as the previous year? 30 is to say, right, those 30 days belong to the next year. So how can you do it without that one day? So again, the Gemara is going to say, Ihachi, Lamed Aleph Mepai. It should be 31 because you need, again, there's two issues. There's Hashrasha, taking root, which they call Haklata here in the Gemara. Plus, you need because the whole Brita is, we're considering this the previous year. So you need at least an element of, according to Rabbi Meir, only one day, according to Rabbi Elazar, 30. So what do they answer? Uh, that we can resolve. The 30 goes in both directions. It's 30 days for Hashrasha, but day number 30, right, going backwards, the first day you planted can also be considered the first, it's kind of like the last day of the previous year, and now it's going to take root in within 30 days, so it counts for both. And therefore, in the end, they say our mish, our Brita is Rabbi Meir. So as I said, we're going to now reinterpret the Brita. Until now, we thought it was this issue of 30 days before is a unit of a year. No, it's not. It's that one day is a unit of a year, and the 30 days are basically right. It's it's really one plus 30. It's really like 31, but it's really 30 because it's like 30 counts for both. One day for the year and 30 days for it taking root. Because anything less than 30 days is already considered next year's 
crop is if you planted it next year, and therefore that's not in the count of the year. So we've now just reinterpreted the Brayta in a very different manner. Now Rabbi Yochanan is going to go back to this machloket, Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Elazar, and get to what's the root of their debate. Where did they learn it from? Okay, where did they get it? And they both learned it from the same verse. Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Ushnehem dershu. They both learned it from the same verse. What's that verse? Vayihi be'echat v'shesh me'ot shana barishon be'echad l'chodesh. We're now in Noach, in the Mabul, in the flood. What happens? On the first, it's on the 601st year, so it says, Be'echat v'shesh me'ot shana, in the Torah, often they reverse, right? In he, modern Hebrew, and this is important for our sugya, so pay attention. In modern Hebrew, we say, shesh me'ot ve'echat. In the Torah, they often say, echat ve'shesh me'ot. But our drasha soon is going to suggest that it should have said 601 and not 1 and 600, okay? And that we can darshan something from that, even though that's normally the typical way they do it in the Torah. But anyway, that's um, freedom of drashot. So it says, in the 601st year, which is the 601st year of what? Of Noah's life. Okay? We're talking about him. The assumption of this, by the way, is that Noah must have been born on Rosh Hashanah, or maybe the Torah always counts people's years of living from Rosh Hashanah. Okay? Because otherwise this doesn't make any sense. And Rosh Hashanah, I should be very careful about how I say Rosh Hashanah, I should really say not Rosh Hashanah. It's counting Noah from the day of creation. Okay, as if his birthday was the day of creation, whether it was or wasn't, is a machlokan among the commentaries. Maybe he was born on, on the day the world was created, or maybe, again, the Torah just counts his years from there. Okay, but otherwise, this whole drasha doesn't make sense if, if you think he was born on some random day in the middle of the year. So it was 600 and, year, and one years into his life. Barishon be'echad l'chodesh. Now, what's echad l'chodesh? Echad l'chodesh is the first of Nisan. And, I'm sorry, echad l'chodesh is the first day of the month, and barishon is the first month. First month, we always say in the Torah, is Nisan. This whole, I have to tell you this, otherwise you're going to be confused. I'm going to tell you something that's going to come up in the Gemara after. This whole drasha is based on the fact that the war was created on the first of Nisan. There's a big debate about when the war was created. First of Tishrei, first of Nisan. We're going to get into that today. Start at the very end of our daf and get into it more tomorrow. But there's a big debate about when the war was created. First of Nisan, first of Tishrei. This has to assume, because what we're going to, the whole drasha is going to be premised on. We're at the very beginning of the 601st year. Because we're at the first month, the first day. First month, first day being Nisan, the first of Nisan. Which means that Nisan is the first day of the creation of the world. And yet it's going to be calling it the 601st year. If we don't consider one day to be a year, then it shouldn't have called it the 601st year. That's going to be Rabbi Meir's proof. So let's read it. Rabbi Meir's Sabah. Mida'akate yom achadu da'ayel b'shana. Since it's only the first day into the year. Ve'kakare la'shana. And it calls it a year. Since said it was in the first and six hundred, which really means, in other words, six hundred and first year, and it already said it was that year, even though we were only one day into the year, that means that one day is already considered a year. Okay. So how's Rabbi Elazar going to learn from here that thirty days is a year? So first he's going to reject Rabbi Meir's proof, and he says, and this is where the order of how you say six hundred and one or one and six hundred comes into play. If it would have said, and then the word achat came right next to the word shana, and it said 601st year, and first goes with year, then I would have said what you said, like you said. But but now, because the Pasuk reversed it, again, it didn't really reverse it, because that's often how the Torah speaks, but let's just assume it was reversed. Since it says, one and six hundred years, and notice what word is next to Shana, six hundred, which means we're one day into the six hundred and first year, but we're calling it six hundred years because we're putting the year next to six hundred. So therefore, atchalta de achat kam Shana ashesh meotkai. The Shana is really referring; it, they would still call the six hundredth year because we hadn't yet gone further into that year. My achat. So the why is it say achat? It was saying it's yeah, we're now starting into the it was starting into the first year after six hundred, but it wasn't really counted as a year yet. That's why the Shana comes right next to six hundred. So that's his rejection of Rabbi May. The question is how from this verse does he derive thirty days? It never says thirty days anywhere in the verse. So because remember he said both of them learn it from this pasuk. So how so? He's going to darshan it from different words. But Rabbi Elazar, my time. What's his reason? Dichtiv barishon beechad Notice how it says, in the first month, on the first day of the year. 
um, sorry, on the first day of the month. Mid'akate yom echad hu da'ayel b'chodesh v'kakari l'chodesh. Notice it says be'echad l'chodesh. It says it was the first day of the month and it called it a month. So therefore, one day is considered, right, one day into a month already is considered the month. So now, umidiyom echad b'chodesh, this is where we make an analogy. One is to a month, right, one day into the month is to a month as, um, right, a, a month is made up of days. So one day to a month, a year is made up of months. So one month into the year is going to be considered significant. So since we're going to call one day a month, if one day is considered a month, 30 days into a year is considered a year. To which the Gemara says, um, so we're going to continue for one minute, right? In other words, each one goes by what you count it by. Right. We don't normally count a year as made up of days. We count a year made up of, of months, and a month is made up of days. So therefore, that's the analogy. Now the Gemara is going to say, What's clear from here, though, is that both commentaries go by the fact they both agree. Right? And you can see, because Rabbi Elazar retorted to Rabbi Meir not, oh, this was really the seventh month of the year, and that's why he called it a year, because the world was actually created in Tishrei. And we're in Nisan right now. No, he doesn't say that. He actually just brings a different answer, which means they both hold that this was the first day of the year. This is the first day of the year, and we're obviously counting from Briat HaOlam, from the moment the world was created. Therefore, it must be that the world was created in Nisan. And now we're going to start the famous Brayta about when the world was created. Machlok at Rabbi Leezer and Rabbi Yoshua. Rabbi Leezer, we'll only see Rabbi Leezer's opinion today. Omer betishrei nevra HaOlam. Okay, this is the other opinion. He says, the war was created in Tishrei. B'Tishrei no do avot. Okay, all sorts of historical events that happened and what dates they happened on. The avot, okay, the fathers were born all on Tishrei. B'Tishrei made to avot. They also died in Tishrei. B'Pesach no lad Yitzchak, right? This is because Avram tells the angels, this week's Parsha, to, he tells um, Sarah, Lushi Ugot, right? They say it's Matzah and then, right, um, it's, he, it was Pesach, the Midrash says, and therefore, right, remember, he's told exactly in a year from now you'll have a son. So he was born on Pesach. Their prayers were all answered to have children on Rosh Hashanah. Okay, he basically got out of jail on Rosh Hashanah. Again, this is all Tishrei. Okay, they stopped working. Um, the, you know, the Avdut ended, okay, even though they didn't leave yet. Benisan Nigalu, they got out in Nisan. Betishrei Atidim Ligael. Since the war was created in Tishrei, even though the Nisan, the Yitzhia Mitzrayim redemption happened in Nisan, but in the future, the future redemption is going to happen in Tishrei. It's almost like this is why he's saying it. Future redemption maybe will be, right, again, this is a more universal theme. The Nisan is not a special month because it's the Jewish people's special month. No, there's this universal, and then there's the Jewish people have their own thing, which is Yitzhia Mitzrayim. That happened in Nisan. But it even says, right, the Avoda, they stopped actually slavery finished already in Tishrei. That there's some sort of aspect of the redemption that happened in Tishrei. We'll talk about this more tomorrow when we see the other opinion. Anyway, we'll stop here for today. Have a great day, everyone. So, and maybe I'll just do a quick, quick review. We took, mainly what we did today is we took this Brita that was not 100% clear, right, especially the line that all of a sudden said, these Peyrot or Asurim, Right, all the way into Tu Bishvat. We had to explain that aspect. Then we went back to the beginning and tried to explain the 30 days. Why do we have these 30 days? Is it because we hold like Rabbi Elazar, who needs 30 days? But then we said, no, no, no. There's this extra element of the, um, the, there's the extra element of this extension that whatever those 30 days are actually really the next year. And therefore you need something additional. So in the end, we say it's actually Rabbi Meir. Okay. Then we brought where Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Elazar, when they were, arguing about the par one day or 30 days. Where did they get it from? They both learned it from this verse in Noach, which we darshaned in two different ways. And then we get to the fact that both of them held that in Nisan Yivra Olam, and then we bring the famous Machlok at Rabbi Eliezer, not to be confused with Rabbi Elazar. Right? Rabbi Elazar held like Rabbi Yoshua. Rabbi Eliezer held that it was in, Nis- in Tishrei. But we're going to see Rabbi Yoshua's opinion tomorrow. They held that it was in Nisan, that the world was created. And then you wouldn't be able to do that drasha because that drasha is clearly based on the fact that the first day of the first month, and this was in the 600th first year, it was the first month of the year. If you don't say it was the first month of the year, there's no way to darshan the pasuk the way we did. That was a quick summary of today.
Have a great day, everyone.